Hey, hey, here we are on the Global Media Summit page. I know. We've never been live on the Global Media Summit page before. I know I have my computer here just to watch things double. I actually think we have never been live. No, we've been live. We did the Ice Bucket Challenge live. Oh, yeah, yeah, we did do that. Oh, that was a good live. point. We've done other lives. That was on Stuff. Amplify. Nice try. Nice try. Well, I wanted to give people a few seconds to show up because... Yeah, you know who does you a good... see it, and then you don't press play until, you know... Yeah, there's a couple people that do really good uh, with how they do the live in that way. They kind of give the countdown, like, we're going to go live at 10, but we're going to do the pre-show from 9.45 till 10. Oh, the pre-show. So maybe this is the pre-show that we're doing right now. What would be helpful to know, Cindy Navarro, is if you could hear us. Right? Well, maybe Cindy would write. Yes. Yes. Or, I can hear you. Yes, sirree, Bob. From yeah. Aileen Bennett. Yeah, that would be good. She's writing right now. I can feel it. So I have sweat on my brow because we just got done with the run. I've decided. This is the profound wisdom I have about live video now. And I was going to tell a couple people. Yes, Erica Grant. Is don't go for a run within an hour of going live. Because I've discovered the same thing. Like, I still have the sweaty run face. But I'm pretty sure there are some commercials that say... Get our cream, because then you'll glisten. Like, I think this <laughs> is what people want. I'm just glistening naturally, naturally right now. Good morning to Erica. Look at that. All right. So, uh, I believe it is May 4th. It's coming up right around the corner. Are We're you going to say be... May the 4th be with you? Oh, nice. You know what? We were in New Zealand last year. Mm -hmm. In ja Jabba? No, Hut. In Hut, Lower Hut, Lower Hut, in Wellington. On Wellington. May the 4th be with yes. you day. That was huh. good. That was pretty cool. Okay, sorry, I'm just putting this on another page so you can keep chatting. Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about what we're doing on May 4th in Dallas. We're doing an advanced social media boot camp. Uh, it's one of our uh, curriculum we don't do all the time, so I think it's pretty exciting because, yeah, you know, we usually we do the circles curriculum or... Uh, I'm really excited about this. Social media is kind of a kind yes. of baby. So we, as you know, uh, at Blogging Concentrated and Audience Industries, we primarily uh, cater to uh, people who are on social media already, uh, either blogging, blogging, podcasting, or, or have a small business. Writers. Uh, they know what's going on. Like, don't come, expect to come and us to teach you how to use Facebook. Because we are assuming that you already have a Facebook page. You have Instagram, you have Twitter, or I at least you, you should, know. <laughs> I think you should explain it as how to set up a Facebook page. Yes. More of, we're going to teach the advanced stuff on Facebook, because people always ask, like, how do you get people, I think the number one question is, how do you get people engaged? We're gonna yes. Teach that. How do you get people engaged? We're going to talk about uh, the importance of understanding your attrition rate and your growth rate. We're going to talk about uh, the algorithm and how you need to understand how the algorithm of each social media property works. Because that should largely dictate how you use it from an editorial can calendar standpoint. Uh, we're going to talk about the data. Rachel loves the data. She is a data miner. But we're going to talk about what's in the data and what's not in the data. I think I could get that as a shirt. Data miner? Data miner. That would be cool. Yeah, and people don't expect that either. But I tell people that you have to know the data. There's so many small business owners or bloggers that we meet that they don't know the data. I'll ask them hey, what was your top post last year? Or what time of the day do people come to your site? Or when is Facebook busy? And they're like, oh, well, I don't know. And then I'll say, do you have Google Analytics set up? Well, not yet. And I think... Ching. Yeah, nice. It's not <laughs> advertorial there. So I think that really, and actually, I know that understanding the data is so key. And I think that sometimes there's almost a, a roadblock, like, oh, I don't want to start learning it. Nice job, Dan. But... Understanding the data, it doesn't take that long to figure it out. And once you know it, it is like you were saying, a gold mine of knowledge. And we're going to talk a little bit about what's not in the data, which is also important. Look at that. You got a, hey, Dan, you all are looking good. Yes, but that's because Ingrid has the best voice on the planet. Oh, okay. Excellent. Yeah. So she's just sort of finding something to tell us good about us <laughs> because she already knows, look, I won. I'm the winner. I have the finest voice ever established on the planet. That's nice. Yeah, she does. It's pretty cool. All right. So then we're, I would say the most important topic and, uh, and the thing that we do most for our clients, the very most important topic Look, she said you two to me. <laughs> I love is, her is 
are you a creator or are you a curator? That is my, so, okay, can I, can I change my favorite and make that my new favorite? I told you that the social media, the data was my favorite, but no, no, this is definitely the favorite. This is totally my favorite because well, you explain it and then I'll tell you some studies, some things I've just learned too. Yeah. Well, a, a curator has a place in this world. America's favorite home videos is an unbelievable example of a curator that has done great things with their brand. Uh, talk shows like Jimmy Fallon is largely a curator. Like they're bringing guests to you. They're bringing other people's content. But what Jimmy Fallon does is he's decided that he's also going to be a creator. So one of the benefits of being the creator is that Rachel with her site FindingJoy.net, she gets – she gets emails every day asking if people can use her content. So when you share a Jimmy Fallon video, when you share a post from Rachel, when you share all these things, you are definitely doing social media like some of the gurus would tell you to do, but you're not building a relationship. You're just sharing something else that you think you and your audience have in common. Uh, but you're not the person whose stuff is being shared. You're the curator. So we're going to go over some examples of some big sites that, have, that, that based their existence on curation and how that has fared over time. And then the big question is, when you're a curator versus a creator, at what point in time does anybody care that you're gone? So let's, let's just say you decide to go on vacation for a month. Do the people in your Facebook community who are watching their feed, do they miss you? Are they going to see that Jimmy Fallon video that you're sharing? Are they just going to see it from someone else, or are they going to actually miss your stuff? Well, I think you can find that actually in the data. So the content versus creator part about it, they, they're in the social media, in the Facebook data. You can discover how many actions were on your page, like how many people actually visited your page. And one of the things I ask uh, bloggers and website owners all the time is, is your page, a, is your content stream driven or is it page driven are people actually coming to your page because i think a lot of people for facebook assume that people are coming to their page and they set everything up like that when actually most content on social and especially on facebook is really just seen in the stream so your goal as a content creator at that point is what can i write to my specific audience that gets them to stop and then i also think that it's super super important to stay on brand and on target uh, we give the example all the time of when you like CNN's page, you are not expecting CNN to be sharing Fox News's updates all the time because they have differing viewpoints. So CNN, when you like it, you kind of know what you're going to get. And that's the cool part about being the content creator is you know, and everybody that likes your page, they kind of know the posture of your site. And that's what starts to drive them from just looking at you in the stream to actually setting so that they get your notifications and to coming to see what you've written every morning. So I don't know if you know this, but for the last few years, um, we've done 30 to 50 live events per year all yes. around the world. Um, and while that's cool, that's how Blogging Concentrated has grown and has uh, reached out uh, with a growth rate to, to, to reach people that we've never seen before. Um, but what, el but what we did on the side of that is we held a meetup in addition to doing the Blog and Concentrate events in the cities that we traveled to for the Finding Joy community, like a live event. Like, hey, come out and meet Rachel. Um, we're all moms. Let's talk about And know, I shared it on the Finding Joy page right now. Awesome. And, and, you know, that part where we take the social media and then we meet the, the people who we want to become fans – that is where we learned things like people don't go to your page. They see stuff in the stream, and then they might click through to your page, but they largely don't just wake up in the morning and type your website name into the Facebook search. So you really have to figure out, all right, how am I going to use the timeline to my advantage? Because if you, like we did, if you loaded up a bunch of events, and then on your Facebook page under the Events tab is your local events, some of the people that came said, I would never have known about it unless my friend told me mm -hmm. that it was, it was coming to my city this weekend because I don't ever go to your page. I just read the stuff in the stream. So that's kind of what we're talking about is you have to understand the algorithm of how people use social media and then also how 
the social, how the content is then delivered to the audience. Yeah. Like creator versus curator. And we, it's, I always say that you have to know your audience first and, and you have to know that uh, a lot of times when people come to your site or your page, they just click the link. I, I don't know of everybody that goes, okay, is this a Finding Joy article or where is it specifically? And that's why one of the reasons I specifically want to make sure that if content that I share on, let's just say on the Finding Joy page, isn't something that I've written, it absolutely has to go through the criteria for the site that I've developed through of kind of rules I have because I want that the community there to be super strong and to know that what they're getting is solid and it matches with the ethos of what's been going on so far. So as far as driving content other ways, I, I actually, there's some really good friends I have out there that write brilliant things and I, I will share them. We kind of have this back and forth communication but we also have this understanding of it always has to match your community absolutely 100% first because at the end of the day, uh, I need the Finding Joy brand or the Finding Joy community to have its own identity. And if I lived as just being a curator of content, how do you know? I mean, I don't think it just matters in the stream at that point versus I want it to be when it's in the stream that they see that it's from Finding Joy and that it's immediately known that this is something that's worth spending time reading this day because everybody only has a certain amount of time. Now, Nicole was saying that that creators shouldn't curate. And I don't necessarily agree with that, but I will say that the number of sponsored posts that we do is minute. I was like, what, one every two or three months? Probably. Because... Because we're, crea we're creators and we, ha we are something to the audience, like we serve a purpose, we, we motivate you, we bring them uh, you know, a, a sense of life and purpose for the day, um, that thing that we share, and, and we do share things. We well, have. Yeah. Like uh, the, the Jimmy Fallon mom tweets, right? Right, but that wasn't even sponsored. And so people always ask about the, the mom tweets, which is... It is still one of my favorite things, and I, I share it often because it matches the mission of finding joy. Mm -hmm. It's it's funny. It's it's like it's worth your time, and I also think that moms need to laugh a little bit. And we, I decided when I saw it that this was way too funny, and I needed to share it. So I just was the curator of that information, and it's ended up being a really high traffic driving post simply because of that. It's whiteboard time, boys and oh, girls. Oh my goodness! But it's whiteboard time. No, I won't draw words. Okay. I'm going to watch it on my live stream. This is you. This is your audience. <gasps> it's a Venn diagram. My favorite thing. And then this part right here where they overlap, this is where you're allowed to share content. Okay. If we're a motherhood site, we don't get to share a NASCAR post over well, you here. Could. If it's a NASCAR post about... The NASCAR oh. driver thanking his mom. If I totally would. <laughs> if it's in here. Right. If it's in the middle. Right. So as creators, we create, the content that we create is in here. That's just what we naturally do. Rachel likes a billion things. And her audience likes a billion things. But they happen to like this part together. So if you're going to curate something, if you're going to share, like we do the mom tweets from Jimmy Fallon, or we've done some... We've done some insurance. There was a video made for an insurance company that was just so beautifully well done about the power of motherhood. That fit, that fit into the middle. So that makes it easy for us to share because it's why the people are on the page in the first place. It helps bolster the relationship and it provides levity and fun and, and we don't actually have to create something. So that's always good too, which doesn't happen all the time. I think at the end of the day, going back to that question about curator versus creator is I always think long term too about what you're building is if in 10 years you're going to sell the site or if, in ten, if you're going to write a book and they look at your Facebook and they look at the engagement and you have to decide like is your own voice and own brand strong enough so that someone could say you know what she's got they've got a real community that loves what, she, what he or she does and mm. that's the ultimate part is you know, I've worked with many, many Facebook pages and helping them jumpstart the page. And one of the biggest things I, I 
encourage people to do is to make sure that if you're a content creator or a writer, that your content ends up being loved and being what being is where there's engagement. Because again, if you stop writing, would anybody know? That's a big question. Now I will tell you this. Um, who does Cole follow? Who's the guy? Shea Roman. Carl? Roman Atwood. Mm -hmm. Roman Atwood. My son. And Shay Carl. Not as much anymore. I know he's grown up. So your your kids likely have YouTubers uh, that they follow. So my son follows Roman Atwood, and and I think Roman is a good person for kids to follow. He does um, he does great. I don't know what you say. I mean, it's more of a live stream. Like he, this is just okay, his is he life. Okay, the one but... that did the. the... The balls. The balls in the, the house. Pit, yes. Because my mom, Spidey Sense, was like, oh, clean up, clean up, clean up. Yes. Like the whole time. He filled his entire house with those balls he get in a ball pit at Chuck E. Cheese. And then he jumped off the balcony. Can you imagine clean up? I'm going back but to anyway, the But anyway, he is a content creator, right? I mean, the YouTubers are. They don't really curate on YouTube for the most part. Um, so when Roman doesn't come out with a new video, my son tells me. I don't, I don't think Roman came out with a video today, Dad. I'm like, that is interesting that he, he follows that much, that that's part of his day. And if you remember back when we were kids, the Cosby Show was on Thursday night at 7. Followed by Family Ties at 7.30. If it wasn't on, we would know. Mm -hmm. Like, we sat down for the purpose of watching that show. When Brandon Carter, who was one of our clients, he's a bodybuilding client, when he doesn't post a workout video at 7 a.m., his audience knows when is the workout video. I mean, at 7.05, is it coming? Are you posting it? Like that level of engagement with your audience is something that we want everyone to achieve, even if you're a dentist in a small town. Like what is it that you can do that makes the lives of your, your audience better? And social media really isn't immune to any niche, I don't think. It's still a relationship-building tool. And, for the, and what we want you to, to get is it's not only a relationship-building tool, but it is a chance for you to grow your audience. Because one of our topics is attrition rate. If you focus solely on your audience on Facebook um, and it grows at 3% or 4%, how many of the people that already like the page that stopped engaging with it are no longer there and now you're growing at a negative rate because you're no longer reaching the people that you used to reach but your page is still growing by a little bit. So we're going to talk a little bit about that too. And there was one other topic on our little handy dandy sheet that we didn't mention. Is that like a cue for me to read it? Well, Ingrid sort of led us to it by saying, because I don't know if you know this, but I sent an email out three minutes before we started that said we're going to do a live Q&A right now to the whole list. So you know, like, again, going back to live, I think that there are people that have it great. Like um, my friend Mary Hyatt, she starts pre-selling that she's going to do a live a couple days before, mm -hmm. and then she is also the one that will do like a 10-minute buffer before she officially goes live. So the idea of pre-selling is great. And I guess the best example that we give is movies. Yes. And the trailers before the movies that my kids love and the movie theater posters. And so you think about it, like my kids are already talking about movies that they want. Oh, it was my son Samuel, Gardens of the Galaxy 2. Mm, yes. Already talking Coming about soon. it and had us put on. Wait, I'm, we're going to it like opening day I know, except I know. one day after that. He had us. He had me write it on the calendar the day that it opened because it's been pre-sold, so now it's on my calendar. So if somebody asks a question that we want to answer, and it's sort of a side question, do, do we talk in parentheses? Oh, like this? Yeah, yeah, like this. For like Megan. Megan. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can watch this later. It'll be on this page. Do we do that? Is that how you, I don't know how you do a side question in a live. I think you do parentheses. And for Nicole, too, because hers is hiccuping. Oh, yes. I think it's your internet connection. Mine? Mm -hmm. What? I didn't create it. I just buy the service. No, no. We need sponsored by Xfinity. Yes. All right, so, so our main topics are curbing the attrition rate, growth. I, I think social media growth is the least talked about topic in any social media boot camp. We're really going to talk about growth. And then... Synchronous versus syn asynchronous. You've probably seen the video that we made, but the idea that if you go on vacation and you come back two weeks later, um, <laughs> like, 
<laughs> Sorry to read Sherry's Wait, comment. You're supposed to laugh in parentheses. <laughs> Sherry. <laughs> so if you go on vacation and you come back to Twitter, do you see any tweets that happened the previous two weeks? That's the question. No, you don't. That's not how it works. So you have to know how each platform works to, 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 to decide how frequently should you post in the first place and when and how does it work. And then the data comes into play with when did it work and what actually created engagement. You know, I think maybe we'll have to add in the power of evergreen content too because I, that is the biggest part of creator versus curator too is I've had people reach out to me and they've said that I have a very strong brand identity on the Finding Joy page and part of it is is due to the content creation. I, I kind of always chuckle at people that will say you can build your Facebook page to 100,000 in the next 30 days and I just think well that's a lot of creation of content unless you're going to be a curator and then how do you pivot to them sticking with your page? I know So that, that's the real question. Right. The totally the real question. Like how, if you grow it to 100,000 people how many of those people actually care? Right. And how much? How many do they care? And brands are getting smarter and smarter. Is now that you can have a page of five hundred thousand, but if three people are liking it, or you can go onto the back end and find out, you know what? There's nobody that really even cares about it. So, I it's kind of like people ask us all the time too. Like, should I post twenty four times a day? Yes. You can't say yes. <laughs> You're breaking the system. No, they'll they'll say that, and I will say. It depends upon your community. There are some people that are super successful with that, but there's other people that I really think it's kind of going to go back to quality. I'm not going to say quality over quantity. It's really quality and in brand and on point. We go back to uh, what is the company that does all the social every like all the time versus we talked about an Amazon coach about. versus Dropbox. Yes. So Dropbox posts. I don't know. Let's just say a ridiculous hundred times a month. And they get, let's just say, 20, I don't remember the stats, 20,000 people engage. And Coach does two posts a month and gets the same. So you can't... Gets twice really, as much. Yeah, you can't even really compare. But they spend a lot more time making serious content like food bloggers do. Right. Food bloggers really spend a lot of time Are you saying making, that writing bloggers? I'm just kidding. Just messing with you. I, I think write. I think authors... No, I agree. I agree because... You're an author. Who has a blog? Well, I think you. that's different than a couponer who has a blog. I wouldn't say that that person's an author. Correct. Well, I think it goes back down to the broad label of blogging. Now it's becoming more of creator or website owner. When people ask what I do, I tell them I'm an entrepreneur. Someone is mowing. It is summer. Well, this is summer for me. <laughs> <laughs> This is totally like, like I, this is the hottest day in Minnesota, and this is just spring in Tennessee. I'm going to die. I need the on-air sign. Should I just put it out there for the mowing guy? Just hold it up? Like, totally, we're on the air. You know, this is what live is about. It's live. Like, if you got a Chewbacca mask and started doing that, you could be you could be Chewbacca dad. I don't know what to do. I should have pre-sold my neighborhood on the fact that we were doing a video at 10. But I didn't. I didn't at all. In fact... I sent an email out. Now I want you to think about this. I sent an email out to the audience right two minutes before we started that said we were starting. I did not send one out a week before or two days before. But the idea that there is an audience to send an email to is powerful. So today we're meeting with a national snack brand that isn't sure how they're going to... Should we close that door? Oh my word, they're walking down your road. It's this dude, he's just like, he can't even see set. This is the power of life. You know what, I think we should just leave it. It's authenticity, it's real, it shows how we adapt. It's funny. Go, go away. And Sherry is reassuring us. All right. So we're meeting with this, this brand later today, and they put healthy snacks largely into convenience stores and truck store truck stops so then the question is for them how do we use social media do we drive like you're not gonna go from your computer and drive to the convenience store to get a healthy snack that's not typically the it's not typically the the way things work so the thing that we're gonna help them understand is maybe are you smiling at me I was 
laughing because your neighbor that always talks to you was walking down. So oh, I thought, yes. wouldn't that be interesting? If we get a lecture during a live video, it'd be... <laughs> so what, what I really want them to focus on is how do they create an audience of people who like healthy food or who are trying to achieve healthy on the go or maybe salespeople who travel all the time, they're looking for healthy. Like, how do we create this audience first and move the audience to the convenience stores versus people buying the food in the convenience store and like some people have you scan a QR code on the back of the label or go do a contest and fill your name in. I don't think that's nearly as efficient. So those are the kinds of discussions that we're gonna have at Social Media Bootcamp when you bring your problems and questions because we'll talk through what are the best ways. And what? A second mower? <laughs> With a larger machine? In our Holy room. moly. You have... You know what? Jeremy Randall says, someone in my this building snuck in a piano. You know how sometimes when you go to a movie, <laughs> intermission? This is intermission. Go get a snack. Some popcorn. I don't know what pop. to do. I'm, I'm writing this down. What is this, Thursday? Yeah. No live videos. Thursday at Thursday 10.30. At 10. <laughs> okay, well, I swear you can hear it now. Like, <laughs> all right, I gotta do something about this. What are we doing? I guess we're still staying live. Oh, he's shutting the, the garage door in the set. Well, the lighting shift, it's mood lighting now. It is. <laughs> hey, we haven't done this before. All right. So yeah, our neighbors, because I keep, I keep the studio door open and you can just see it from, oh, like if you're in the street, people just look, they just walk by and they look. Like there's a lot of lights on in that garage and that guy's talking to no one. Yeah, the UPS guy, the sweet <laughs> set, he rented out. The guy's talking to no one, what's going on in there? All right, so what questions might we have? I had a couple that somebody emailed me that yesterday. Did you, what, you have, well, you're actually going to thinking about starting a mentoring program. I am, so I feel like this, if I'm blinded, I, it could be a song, Blinded by the Light, but. Is it too bright for you? It's, it's all right, it's all right. So I actually, I am starting, I'm going to start two things on the Finding Joy page. I'm going to start a coaching kind of mentoring program where we're going to talk about the happy mom and then I'm also going to do a mentoring coaching thing for moms or anybody that wants to start blogging or writing online because I get so many questions about it and we're going to use it as I think what I'm going to do is one time a week a live session where we could interact back and forth because to me this is like the coolest thing to connect with the community, the live, it took me a long time to understand like how lives can be awesome, but to get the live feedback is really cool where we can answer questions and dialogue. Yeah, I I am not 100% I'm sold. on board with live yet. Well, we'll just test it out with my stuff. And the reason for that is there's only a percentage of people that could see it live. And then the rest well, of the views that's where the come, come afterwards. That's where the pre-sale comes. We're saying every day, every Wednesday at 1, we're going to be live on the Finding Joy page. Make sure you save that time. And we're going to talk about this. Yeah. That's where I think the power is. We're going to talk about uh, two ways to be happier this week or two ways to take care of yourself. So one of, uh, one of our clients, Rich and Thick Hair, they make a... Um, <laughs> there will be no... There'll be no mowing in Dallas. Could be. No mowing. So one of our clients, um, they sell a, a hair powder that's made out of entirely organic botanicals. And I'd never heard of a hair powder before, but it's really like makeup for hair. Is that, was a, that's how I consider it. Because if you have uh, roots that are a different color than your hair. Like, right. Then, or and, thinning hair. And that's a problem for you. Because one, it's expensive to go like touch up your roots every week. Then this is a product that allows you to. I'm impressed how much uh, you know about hair now. <laughs> I really am. That allows you to actually color that portion of your hair uh, for periods of time, like like you would makeup, the same kind of thing. 
and it's made of organic botanicals and it's uh, really really good for your scalp I mean it's beautiful so one of the things that we did for them is put together an entire keyword theme map and that is pretty much every keyword that you could ever search for where her product would be a solution to their problem so that's that's hair thinning hair shedding cover up your roots, cover your hair, you know, there's dozens. I think we have over 4,000 keywords. And then from a social media perspective, that's putting all the keywords into a keyword theme map so we know how, what posts and what content we're gonna have on the site. But then, then it's taking all of the related ones, the really, really closely related ones that you couldn't really have a duplicate post on your site, that would be kind of ridiculous. And then turning those into YouTube videos and slide share slideshows and Facebook mini blog posts and medium posts and learning then how to take your SEO and your content and meld it with social media that not only fills your social media calendar but enables you then to start pre-selling which is very hard to do if you're working on a moment to moment day to day or week to week basis so they have an entire calendar for a year and they know exactly what each theme of each month is and here's the theme of the month which is a, a concept that Rachel came up with for us and then in that theme we have YouTube videos that explore that and then link back to the blog post uh, for our SEO juice and then we have uh, slide share presentations where we take you know images from the different things that we're doing and we create a slide presentation and put that on slide share which we can then share on LinkedIn so these are the kinds of things that I think we'll probably just bring the calendar to show you in Dallas but uh, these are the kinds of things that we really need you to think through in your social media program is how do we build this out so that it's strategic, uh, it builds leverage over time, it actually helps our, our search engine relevance, helps us be found by people who didn't know we existed, um, and it enables you to not work on the fly, but maybe work a month out. I, you, you said something that I think is super important. Oh, thank well, you. Well, yes, well, thank you for also <laughs> acknowledging that I came up with the theme. That was awesome. Yes. But... You know what it was, was a lot of times people will, they want kind of the box program for social media. Like if, if what they're doing, they, can, they want to take it and implement it for theirs. But here's the deal, McDonald's has a strategy for all the McDonald's. Burger King has its own strategy that fits theirs. Wendy's has their own strategy. They're not going and saying, taking whatever their strategy and boxing it in. And I think that's the truth with social media. And actually I know it is, is in order to be successful at social media, you have to step back and figure out the marketing plan, the strategy for your audience. You have to figure out your own kind of planogram for your community. And you can base it off of however somebody else is doing it, kind of look at it and learn, but you have to ultimately tweak it. Like for instance, when I've developed marketing strategies for Facebook for clients, I will analyze their social media for a month or six weeks before I even start implementing what plan it is from basically analyzing every type of social post that we put on Facebook and then going back a week later and tracking the engagement rate, tracking everything about it so I can start to develop patterns and nuances. And you can't do that unless you invest that little bit of time to see that, you know what, a video at 7 a.m. works way better than a video at 7 p.m. for this particular client. So part of the social media strategy that we're gonna teach is how do you start not only implementing a social media program, how do you analyze your social media program first so that you know how to build it so that you could say to somebody else, this is what we do on Facebook and you could pass it and train other people in your community. So for me, that concept, that is the hardest stuff to put into our proposals when we do work mm -hmm. for other clients because listening and figuring stuff out it's very hard to explain that it has an ROI on the back end of it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I always feel like I'm trying to make it sound more exciting than it is when we put in proposals because it's like the most important part. But it sounds like I don't really, it sounds like it's hard to pay for, you know? Yeah, but I think that one of the coolest examples we have of it is we had another bodybuilding client that he, he just really wanted to engage with his audience more and he couldn't figure out why. Clearly his, we're talking about me. I know, it was Dan, but his Instagram posts weren't reaching the audience they should have. And Dan and I went through all of his Instagram pictures, every single one, and categorized them. We did the same thing with YouTube. We categorized what the thumbnail was, what the title was, and we started tracking everything down. Well, what was fascinating about this 
um, client this was that he was targeting the wrong audience and he wouldn't have known it unless we had dissected how people interacted and looked mm -hmm. at who his followers were. And what we found for him was is his audience was primarily um, 20 to 30 age or years old men from the Middle East and they wanted the really fast cars, they wanted that James Bond lifestyle but he was targeting the way he was pitching his product and himself before was kind of going after the I would say the California beach body look and there was a point where they he was putting bikini clad girls in images not understanding that his audience would not like those type of pictures and the second that he took a picture of himself in a Tesla with a Rolex his social media engagement went through the roof yeah Saudi Arabian 20 somethings with serious money lots of money yeah so the last oh yeah we told that Sherry yeah. so Tim Sohn is in Pennsylvania we met him at Build Your Influence Summit up there he's got a social media practice I feel like it is west of Philadelphia <laughs> Which is wow, funny way to go, everything, Dan. Everything's west. Dan's geography, Dan, Dan won the sixth grade geography bee, right? But yeah. I feel like he's an hour west. Okay. So if you're looking for social media help, Tim, Tim is the guy out there. Uh, a supplement company. So I started, my entire internet career started with a supplement company. We own the worldwide marketing rights to OPC Factor, which is an antioxidant nutritional supplement. Uh, our... I mean, we did TV infomercials, radio infomercials, and then uh, what I at the time called third-party sites, which, uh, which, we, we, which still exist. Uh, benefits of resveratrol with hyphens, benefits hyphen of hyphen resveratrol.com was a site that we built based on the ingredient resveratrol inside of the supplement. And then at the time, it had a, 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 you know, it was a lot of people talking about it. Dr. Oz was talking about it. Um, and we thought, well, if we could capture everyone interested in resveratrol and tell them that, we, that was in our product, then a certain percentage of those people um, would translate into sales. Um, and then from a social media standpoint, we're really trying to work the benefits of the product, not the ingredients of the product, because social media is a social medium where you really just share stories, and it's very hard to share stories about the resveratrol content in different kinds of grapes over time because that gets kind of dull. But it is a good tactic to bring people to the platform. Um, and I'm sure your supplement has a variety of, uh, of, of ingredients, and there are fans of all of those ingredients. You know, there are people who are in MLMs who get tired of the MLM, but they really like the juice they were drinking, and it had the thing, and now they want to buy the thing, but they don't want to buy the MLM, because that means they have to go talk to their neighbor again, which they don't want to do, because, you know, you know how it goes. <laughs> so, build a site around it. Now, some things are very, very hard to do social media-wise. Um, we had an incontinence site. Incontinence it is a... It seems like we have all... We keep talking about all these random sites. Yes. We have this site and this one. We had urinaryincontinencesolutions.com, which mm -hmm. doesn't exist now. Um, but incontinence is a disease that is so debilitating, people don't even tell their doctor. Like, they just... They're so embarrassed by it, and it, they can't go out that you know, to almost you almost become a shut-in, um, and trying to get to social media where people would basically, when you like, when you become a fan of the incontinence page, I mean, you're basically saying I have it. That's not something people are willing to do. So that means that you have to look at the tool of social media against what it is that you're doing to figure out is it the right tool. So for some people, SEO is a great tool. Other people's social is a great tool. Other people live events is a great tool. Um, other people referrals, you know. So you have to figure out with your particular sup supplement, whatever it, whatever it helps or cures, is that something that people are willing to raise their hand, which is what you're doing when you do social media. Raise your hand and say, yes, I agree, or yes, I believe, or yes, I take that. I think you have to figure out the pain point too and what you could create that would make people share it. For instance, we know someone that has a supplement for low testosterone, which really isn't something you think, wow, that's going to be something I'd share on Facebook. But they realized how to resonate with the audience and create information around it that made videos that were reaching a million people. Yeah, his videos. Are, and he's just standing and, against a wall. And they're, but they're, they're full of the information in such a way that when you share it, it's, it's spun it in a way that it's kind of this empowering thing, taking back your health. But it took a I lot of... I can't remember the name of his site. Um, 
I'll figure it out. It took a lot of going back to it and figuring it out. So I like with with a supplement, I would figure out like what is the pain point or what are people talking about or what are like that's why we do the keywords. What are people searching for that this is the answer? And then the thing that I always talk about is it takes so much listening to your community, listening and responding back in the voice of the community. The best thing that you can get is someone that said, oh, you knew what was in my head. That was what I was thinking. Because then you're really listening and then you're resonating and then the people listening to you or whatever you're writing about will think, this, they, they totally get me. I have to share, share this with somebody else. Yeah, I definitely like the concept of... Anabolic men? No. So, isn't that it? Might be. Anabolicmen.com? Maybe. I do like the idea of social proof when it comes to supplements as well in terms of of what Rachel was saying, what problem it cured or what, well, what is so it helping. Well, you careful with that. You're like, what is yeah, it helping? You can't say cured, yes, I guess. But, but you'll, you'll know with your own supplement where you are in terms of FDA And I, I think that you can see the success of it. Let's just go to essential oils. It's a supplement, really, but they've been able to take what they've done and pivot it into a social community where people share it. So it's really understanding who are the people that will use this and who are the people that will champion it for me without me having to do all the championing, the, the work. Does pine salt have essential oils in it? Because it smells lemony. It probably has lemon oil in it. Is that an essential oil? Yeah, it is. What if it's not really essential? What if it's just like optional? Young Living Optional Oils. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like, you don't really need it's these. It's not referred to like essential in that way. Like water is essential. Right. You know what? We're sidetracking. Let's just keep it right there. I think they should change rain the name. Rain it in. Rain it in. Highly optional oils. But we really think you should take them. All right. All right. What else do we have? Any other questions? I don't think so. We, this is a long live. I was originally thinking it would be 15 minutes. Eight minutes? minutes. Yeah. 11. What are we going to talk about? 14. And then all of a sudden I looked and I'm like, wow, we're 42 minute live. And we had diagrams. If you and, didn't catch the diagram, you have to watch the replay. We did have an intermission. intermission. And then. And you had an advertorial. This oh. is not sponsored by Canada Dry. Do you know what this is in Canada? They just call it dry. Oh <laughs> so, all right. That's good. Yes. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. If there are any other questions, I believe it's May 4th through the 6th in yes. Dallas. I think it's gmssummit.com. Uh, we're doing a, a social media boot camp on the first day of the, uh, of the weekend. We'd love for you to come out, come for the whole weekend. Oh, I don't know if you know this, if you've seen the emails, but if you're looking to get into media, mm -hmm. there's like it's very all cool. kinds of people that are in TV and radio and movies who are coming to talk about how to get into TV, radio, and movies, and not just like anybody, like these like executives. It's really cool. I kind of wish we weren't there for such a short time, but yes. You know. So yeah, if you're looking to, to take your social media and move it into a different media world, I think Global Media Summit is a great place for you to start. F ask questions, figure out what it is that you don't know, and then go from there. I, I can't think of a better place because there's just so many bigwigs who are coming to talk to you about how to really get things done that, you know, it's not just like the other blogger that you know. It's like people who've done it, which I think is awesome. So we look forward to seeing you there. Um, I don't have any, oh, there's a finish button. Uh, there is, I know, but you have to actually click on it. So. Is that in case we want to translate it into Finnish? Or is that yeah, finish the broadcast? Finish the broadcast. It's just one end. Yeah. Okay. All right, okay. thank you. Bye from the darkened studios of Audience Industries.